What uh, we will uh, discuss today is the third component of the battery. You see, each battery is always formed by three components. One negative electrode, one positive electrode, and in between there is the, the electrolyte. The electrodes conduct something wrong here. Oh. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. Ah, it looks so. <laughs> the electrodes conduct by electrons, while the electrolytes conduct by ions. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see what are the materials that we can use as electrolyte for lithium and lithium-ion batteries. Is that on a little bit out of? Focus or is okay? Is okay? Okay, good. Well, anyhow, the first uh, most common electrolyte is a liquid solution of a lithium salt in a mixture of aprotic organic solvents. This is the most common electrolyte. But as we will see, for various reasons, we have um, some alternatives now. One, two are uh, polymers like that stuff. One is of gel type, and another one is solvent-free. We discussed about that. And the future electrolytes are these ionic liquids. Some of you have heard about ionic liquids last uh, time, but uh, we, I will uh, briefly recall them here. Oh, I think it's definitely out of focus. But you have this in your, yeah, okay, you have, uh, can, so this is the type of, uh, you see here the various salts that we can use it, okay, and uh, <clears throat> I think uh, this one should be L LBF4, and this is the most common one, LPF6, and others, and uh, you see, the most interesting uh, properties are uh, <coughs> the conductivity. And here are the conductivities of these salts to the left in PC, propylene carbonate, and to the right in the most common solution, which is EC, ethylene carbonate, and DMC. And you see that these salts here, have very, these two have a very high conductivity, so this is the reason why we select those. Also, I don't know what that is. Ah, also this is uh, <coughs> the potential versus lithium that the solution, uh, no, I don't understand, what is it? Ah, no, no, this is the anion, this is the anion oxidation. So, for instance, Oops. Okay, this is uh, the, the situation of the salt when it's uh, dissolved in ECDMC. Okay. So the lithium ion are conducting through the cell, and this is the anion. Now it is important to know at which potential this anion decompose. Because remember that we have uh, <clears throat> always the problem of the decompositions of the solution, which may create some um, safety issue. So this uh, here, unfortunately, is not very, very clear. Here is the, the value. For instance, if we take uh, LIPF6, we see more or less that this value is for something. 485, 465. So that means that up to 465 volts, the battery may operate without decomposing the, the anion. In the, for instance, in the case of uh, this one, the decomposition is only three, 390, so this salt is no use, no, not very used to, to be used. LIICF3 
3SO3 minus, called triflate. <coughs> so this one you should not use because this one, you know that this, I, I told you, that the cathode materia are deposit on aluminum substrate. And this salt corrodes aluminum. This is the reason why the stability is very low. So never use this salt for a lithium battery because uh, lithium battery usually has a voltage higher than 3.5, whatever. And so you will corrode the aluminum substrate. Somebody using this salt and they see that the battery does not work and they have no idea why it is working. The, the, the reason is that in, you have uh, this corrosion. In fact, uh, I think here is, uh, uh, is uh, <coughs> written uh, just this part. So this one, where it's written yes, that means that these salts may be used with uh, aluminum substrate. When it's written no, they cannot. This was not very clear. Let's go to see the other part. This is clear now, a bit clear. Now, this one <coughs> gives you the volume of the anion. You see, the one uh, on, uh, <coughs> on the left, the little uh, red dot, is the size of lithium, which is 2 uh, a minus 3 nanometer, okay? actually very small. But then you have all the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the size of the anion. Now you understand that into the, into the electrolyte, so here we have one electrode, maybe the negative electrode, E1, and here we have the positive electrode, E2, and in the middle, there is this salt. It's lithium, which has to move. But also, the anion moves. Okay? So the biggest is the anion. The, the slowest will be his, his movement. Because, of course, uh, <coughs> if you have uh, an anion of this size, this moves faster than an anion of this size. Obvious for, for uh, size reasons. And uh, for instance, you, you don't want to use a lithium BC6F5 4 minus. No, like actually, lithium BC6F5 4 this salt, because it's that so big that, uh, that the viscosity will be high, the conductivity is very, very low. So, Usually, you, you, you choose a very small um, anion, for instance, like this one, but you cannot use this one because of corrosion, they told you. And uh, you see the another one is this one, lithium perchlorate, but you cannot use lithium perchlorate because it explodes. It does explode. So the choice is on this one, which is a, a, a reasonably low... low um, Volume, so, is a good conductor. This is better? Yeah, it's a bit better. Now, you see, I remember that uh, an electrolyte is formed by a salt into a solvent. So, before we saw the property of the salt, now we see the property of the sol solvent. And you have many possibilities. You can use uh, uh, diesters or carbonates or... Uh, Carboxylic est ester or ethers. Okay, let's take, uh, <coughs> for instance, from the top. This is, you see the top is ethylene carbonate. You see the structure. You see the melting point. It's interesting because the melting point of ethylene carbonate, you see, is uh, higher than 25. So... One of expected to have it solid, but then when it's when in, in solution, of course, it dissolves. The boiling point is very important. Why? Because uh, we don't want to have um, <coughs> evolution of uh, 
gas into the battery if, some, if eventually the temperature arises. The viscosity is very, is very good, it's very important, because the viscosity, viscosity affects the conductivity. You understand that uh, the more viscous is a liquid, the more difficult is for the ion to move inside there. Okay? For instance, the anion move uh, uh, faster in a glass of water than in a soup, okay? Or than in oil. So. Then uh, the electric constant is very important. Why? Because the highest is the electric constant, the highest is the dissolving power of a solvent. For instance, just to give you, give you an example, <coughs> example many very well known to you, just to explain this, suppose that you have a salt like this, this is a solid, right? But when we add some water, this becomes a solution. <clears throat> and this happens because water is a very high dielectric constant, about 80. Why is that? Because water, if you look at the, at the structure of water, here we have oxygen, here we have hydrogen, here is about uh, 108 degrees, and we have... Uh, some ex and these are covalent bonding. So the, the electrons are now equally distributed. So we have a, an excess of negative charge on oxygen and a set of positive charge to, to hydrogen. Okay? And you see that you know that sodium chloride is maybe something like that very simply <clears throat> maybe this is sodium okay and even if this is solid this ion are not fixed in their crystal sides, but they oscillate, right? And uh, if we rise the temperature up to from 25 to about 800, something like that, what will happen? That this oscillation will increase, 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 and finally the bonding will break. And I ate, I ate uh, I find it, uh, at 25 degrees, sodium chloride is a solid, at 800 degrees, a liquid. Actually, it's an ionic liquid, as we will see. But we may obtain the same situation by using water. Why? Because this is negative charge, this is a uh, positive charge, this is a negative charge. So, what will happen? The water will orientate 